Hi guys, welcome to Gadget First. This is the second part of our video uh, series on where we show you how to build a gaming computer. Uh, today we're just going to be looking at installing the different parts onto the actual motherboard itself. There we go. And um, basically uh, figure out the best way to install it into the case. But we won't be showing it uh, installed, installed in the case just in this video just yet. Um, but as you can see, here we have the processor, the RAM, and the motherboard itself. Now the best place to start is, uh, basically if you're a new builder, your first, your, um, and this is your first time building, you may be um, a bit over excited and you might want to get everything in the case straight away rather than um, install stuff on the motherboard, then put it in the case. You might want to just chuck everything in the case and away you go. But um, definitely the best way to do it is actually by installing stuff onto the motherboard, then putting that into the case rather than the other way around. So this basically goes at the back of your case and goes over the different uh, ports on your motherboard, uh, showing you what they are and what they do. So nice and simple. Uh, they've installed, they've uh, included a SATA cable which is used for, well two actually, two SATA cables which are used for connecting hard drives to the motherboard and CD drives, DD, DVD drives, things like that onto the motherboard. There's a user manual here which if you need it you can use it but probably not much use to me. And here's the motherboard itself in an anti-static bag. Now, uh, to make sure that you don't damage the stuff in any way, uh, make sure you're not on like a carpeted floor and that you do um, earth yourself before you start doing work. I'll just touch something metal to, there we go. Should be fine now. I'm on a china floor, so it's okay. Right, so here's the motherboard itself and there's the I.O. input output and you can see where that goes over just like that. Alright then, um, so you've got four RAM slots on this particular motherboard. Um, you'll probably get different amounts of uh, RAM slots, DIMM slots, whatever you want to call them, on uh, different motherboards. But we've got four on here and that seems to be the most common. We've got the socket here, which is where you install the actual CPU. And as you can see, uh, down the bottom left, there's a little triangle which corresponds to what you'll see on the processor in just a minute, and that's the way you install it. Uh, this one, this, mo this motherboard, has two PCI Express slots, 2.0 slots. Um, basically, these are for graphics cards, sound cards, all things like that that need PCI Express. And um, I think they both, this one will run at X16, which means it's suitable for graphics cards. And this one will run at X16 if there's nothing in this one, but it will only run at X4 if there's a graphics card in here. Uh, but for most purposes, that's just fine. Uh, I, like, I like that, where you can just press that and take it out. That's quite nice. Um, so yeah, pretty nice motherboard. Uh, let's just take a look at some of the other stuff. I'll just place this down back onto its anti-static bag, just to be um, safe. There's no, there's no point in going all out and buying safety gloves and all that, anti-static gloves, there's no point in that really, it's a waste of money, really. Um, so the RAM here, just open it up. There we go. And then pop it out. Now, uh, no matter what um, sticks of RAM you have, the way that you install it is going to be fairly similar. Um, you can see I have two sticks of two gigabytes here, and what we're installing this one is two sticks of four gigabytes. And despite being different, you install them in the exact same way. And depending on uh, your motherboard, it might differ whether you've got two slots, two RAM sticks, and four slots. You might want to put them next to each other or into the corresponding coloured slots. Uh, on this particular one, if I zoom in, you can see that um, you have one blue slot 
one white slot, then a blue slot and a white slot again, which basically means that you're going to want to put, because we've only got two sticks, you're going to be wanting to put one stick in the blue slot, missing out this white one and then putting the other one in here. So let's get on with that. So basically just pull the two pins apart like that and um, don't be too scared about putting too much pressure on it. Um, just basically put it in like that and then don't be scared just put quite a bit of pressure down maybe hold it like that there you go and that's in there absolutely fine um, I mean I'm still like it nowadays I still get a little bit scared putting RAM in because I feel like it's going to snap but ample pressure they can deal with it it's absolutely fine and this will go in the second blue slot but definitely check your motherboards um, check the website or um, the manual to make sure that yours is the same. There we go. So that's the RAM installed. And that's all fine. Uh, let's take a look at the processor. Now unless you get an OEM processor, um, the processor should come with its own heatsink, which will be perfectly adequate for running it in most situations. Uh, here's the heatsink, as you can see. Uh, just a nice fan and then you get these metal fins which uh, take the heat from the processor and on the bottom here you can see it comes pre-applied with some thermal paste which basically um, makes this uh, uh, conduct the heat from the processor uh, a bit more efficiently and more quickly meaning your processor stays nice and cool you've got uh, like a manual here warranty guide don't need that and the processor itself and a nice little sticker. Right then, so uh, just be a bit careful not to drop this on the floor and open it up. So you can take the, actually, uh, just leave this sticker in there for now. We'll put it on the case at a later time. Now what I was talking about with that triangle is at the bottom here, you can see there is this golden little triangle and on the motherboard down here there's also a corresponding triangle which basically tells you that's where it's meant to go so all we're going to do on an AMD system, it's slightly different on an Intel but it's essentially the same, you should be able to figure it out just fine is we pop this out and then lift this up and then we put the, uh, just check the pins actually, check the pins that they're all fine and you can see that they are and check there's nothing in the holes on the slot, on the socket, sorry. That's all fine. So we're going to drop it in. There we go. That's fine. And then you just push this down and put it under its latch there. So here I've got the AMD heatsink. Uh, be careful when you take it out of its plastic uh, tray not to touch the thermal paste or the, your CPU might not run quite as cool. Uh, but I really like the way AMD's mounting system works. You have a slider here which then clips onto these two plastic uh, ledges here. And so to start off, I usually just hook it under the bottom of the latch first. And then make sure you apply some nice pressure to it to make sure the heat, the heat sink paste, thermal paste um, goes on good. Right, so that's all fine. And what you do is you just pull this lever back and don't be scared it will apply quite a bit of pressure but that's all absolutely fine and there you go that's completely on there rock solid now and all you have to do is you see these uh, four four pins here they plug into here on the motherboard which basically is the CPU fan um, header which controls and powers the CPU fan here so that's all fine and that's ready to go uh, now your motherboard, when it's like this, is perfectly fine to be installed into its case. Um, but one thing I'll show you in the next video is uh, the best way to install it in the case. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope you find the video informative and look out for the next one if you're following. Cheers.